Our second speaker is an elementary school teacher who has made it her goal to infuse creativity into each of her classrooms. Tonight, she is going to convince you that creativity not only makes us human, but can change the world. Welcome to the SNC Talk stage, Molly Lucarelli. <laughs> Now, don't groan, get out those paddles, because you have just been cast in SNC Talk's first ever performance. Congratulations. Now you don't have to stand up, you just gotta use your paddle. So, get ready, we're going into rehearsals. Do you think they can make it to final performance in 58 seconds? I think we can do less than that. I think we can. You're gonna take your paddle and you're gonna pick any side that you want. You choose, which color do you wanna use, green or white? I'm gonna choose green today. You're gonna hit six bops this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, and a big rainbow going back. You're gonna do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, Big rainbow back. You're gonna rainbow this way, rainbow that way, and then you're gonna bring it up, bring it down, bring it over there, bring it over there. Three full times. And then finally, you're gonna flip it back and forth a few times until the music is done. And that's your choreography, or paddleography is what I like to call it. All right, Kent, I think they're ready. Here we bit go. Bit by bit. Putting it together, piece by piece. Only way to make a work of art. First of all, you need a good foundation. Otherwise, it's risky from the start. It takes a lot of earnest conversation, but without the proper preparation. Having just the vision's no solution. Everything depends on execution. The art of making art is putting it together. That's what counts. Congratulations, you just did it. The late Stephen Sondheim wrote the piece you just heard from his musical Sunday in the Park with George. My favorite line is the art of making art is putting it together. That's what counts. Art and creativity go together. Most people associate creativity with art because we've all experienced it in some shape or form. We see color, hear music, connect emotions, even if we're not the ones producing them. Dr. Roger Beatty, a cognitive neuroscientist from Penn State, defines creativity as our capacity to envision experiences that have not yet occurred. Just moments ago, I volunteered you to be a part of a creative experiment, a paddle performance that had never occurred. But I'd venture to guess that if I asked each of you if you were an artist, you would say, no, I am not an artist. Or I don't sing or dance or act. Or simply put, I don't feel particularly creative. Well, I hate to break it to you. But just moments ago, you were creative. You helped create a piece of art with your fellow attendees, and your brain thanks you for it. In fact, this is how much of your brain was engaged during your paddle performance. This is your brain on creativity. Now compare that to your brain when you're catching a quick nap. Research has historically suggested that the right hemisphere of the brain is the creative emotional side, and the left side of the brain is the logical reasoning side. The truth? Creativity is a whole brain activity. Pew, 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 firing on all cylinders. Your frontal cortex, your hippocampus, your basal ganglia, and your white matter all work together as an awesome team. The last five minutes, your brain was high on creativity, dancing like rapid fire. You're awesome amazing, beautiful, magnificent, whole brain, it loves the pew, pew, pew. <laughs> and I can tell you that that was not the first time today that you were creative. Have you picked out a matching outfit, navigated a detour to work, written an email, cooked a meal, listened to music, watched something joyful, 
your awesome, amazing whole brain lit up like the masterpiece it is when you did all those things. Without creativity in our day, we wouldn't be human. Now, I happen to be a human with a particular appreciation for cultivating creativity, especially in young people. For the last 10 years, I have been a grade school teacher, and I've learned that being a teacher is so much more than ensuring my fifth graders can read and write and calculate. It's my job to mold them into functioning members of society. No pressure. We teachers feel the pressure, though, to close the achievement gap, boost rigor, increase engagement, often with limited time, resources, and training. Yikes. Now, I'm not saying those things aren't important. They absolutely are. But what do our kids really need to be successful in their futures or for whatever lies ahead of them? According to Forbes, the top 10 vital skills human workers need in the future are as follows. And at the top of the list, critical thinking, emotional intelligence, and hmm, creativity. So how do we teach and support creativity well before these humans enter the workforce? Let me tell you in the form of a few stories. Last fall, I sat next to one of my fifth graders, I'll call Kyle, as he watched his first live theater performance ever. Our class got to attend a performance of Wicked at the Fox Cities Performing Arts Center thanks to a gracious grant from the Canary Fund. I can still hear Kyle's laughs, his gasps, and feel the bruise on my arm the number of times he tapped and pointed to something extraordinary on stage. When the lights came back up, he sat back in his seat and he said, I just don't think I will ever forget this day. Could I have shown them pictures of the musical after we read The Wizard of Oz? Yes. Did this fifth grade boy have a profound experience watching live theater for the first time? A whole brain? Yes. One of my 10-year-olds, I'll call Ava, was an exquisite artist long before she entered the walls of my classroom. But something sparked when I introduced the abstract art form of cubism to the class. Now, cubism aligned particularly well with the overlapping storylines of the novel Holes we had read together. Ava poured her heart and soul into her character cubism piece, saying how she loved how something so odd could describe so many different sides of how we as people can feel. Could she have written that on a formal test? Possibly. Did creating a piece of cubism allow her to understand it on a deeper level? Yes, yes, a whole brain, yes. It has been my greatest joy to have creativity at the center of my teaching practice. The more I can integrate art, music, theater, and dance into our day-to-day -day lessons, the more engaged I see my students. I have seen countless innovative light bulb moments happen at the hands of creativity as the wheels are turning in their magical, wonderful, awesome whole brains. Sir Ken Robinson, an educational advisor in arts education, describes in his TED Talk, we don't grow into creativity, we grow out of it. So how do we stop the growing out part? One way, we encourage kids not to be afraid to be wrong. Too often as a society, we stigmatize mistakes. We can and should allow creative alternatives to demonstrate understanding at any age as new solutions and new ideas. So I want you to lift your paddles again, one more time. And I want you to move it around however 
your magical, wonderful, amazing, whole brain wants to. This, friends, is indeed beautiful. Ordinary, extraordinary people sitting in an auditorium with pieces of paper glued to tongue depressors, creating a little bit of art together. You are capable of being creative and taking a risk. But you don't need to be the next Picasso, Mikhail Baryshnikov, Carol Channing, or even Stephen Sondheim. But if we want a future filled with critical thinkers, hard workers, kind and tolerant souls, joy seekers, and people who want to make the world a better and brighter place, we need to cultivate creative kids. They are our future, and their whole brain is eager to be engaged and nourished, and so is yours. Creativity is not something you are or are not. We just need to embrace all opportunities to create by being vulnerable, taking a risk, and finding beauty in the ordinary. And that kind of creativity, it can change the world. Thank you. <laughs>